again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. We are thrilled that you are checking our show out and listening to what we have to say, because we always seem to have something to say about things. <laughs> um, summer, we're not going to go into too much detail, but this is really an awesome summer. It is I, amazing. I mean, it's even a little chilly, chilly on the porch. I, I definitely I mean, decided I like it, that... The, but I had a scarf this, and a sweater on this oh, morning. Oh, I, <laughs> I can't go that far, but I... I this is actually perfect, like perfect camping weather because you get up in the morning and you put a sweatshirt on or you get to have a fire at night and you're not ready to pass out from the heat. Yep. But in the middle of the day, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yes. So good. I've um, had at least eight people this week be like, this is the perfect summer. It is. It has been really, yeah. really a good summer. Okay, now we've jinxed okay. ourselves. We're sorry, It's going to snow tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's supposed to be good. I had a, um, I actually didn't run my air conditioner yesterday with, in the downstairs part of my house anyways, which was kind of nice to have the windows open and not have the house heat up. Yeah, yeah I closed them all and turned the air on before I left today. <laughs> um, so I was reading, um, I was out of town over the weekend. I was in Rhode Island visiting Dan's dad, and I was, but I still read the paper. So before I left, I think it was Friday, there was an article in the Union Leader which caught my attention. Um, it was a Mark Hayward article about... It, the headline was City Matters, Eviction, Arrest at the Hands of Manchester Police Officer Landlord. And I was like, well, what is that about? Now, um, for those of you who don't know, maybe you're only maybe you're a renter and have no idea what the other side is. Um, New Hampshire laws highly favor the tenants in yeah. landlord tenant disputes. And, um, and I think that that's nationally. The yeah, case. And, you know, I mean, um, tenants, if, if you have a bad, if you're a landlord and you have a bad tenant, somebody who's not paying rent or somebody who's destroying your property, um, there's not much you can do. You can go to court and you can file a petition and you can go through all these steps and hopefully in three to four months of them, at, at which point undoubtedly they stop paying you rent and damage your property more, um, you you can get the court to say they must go. But there's it's really tough on landlords. We're also only in New Hampshire, you're only allowed to ask for one month security um, deposit. So if your rent's $1,500 a month, you know, $1,500 in damages is that doesn't go very far right. in this world. You know, try to replace a carpet. That's There's your $1,500. Um, so anyways, this article caught my attention because I was like, well, what does that mean? And I feel really bad and I'm going to have to, I always feel like we're having to say this. I'm not anti-cop. There are some great cops out there. I just don't know why there's so many stories about bad cops or cops misusing their power. Well, that, or at least, you know, I hear a lot of feedback from people who say, you know, but there are good cops there out are. there. And, and, and I agree, but yeah. the question becomes when we're starting to look at a trend yeah. of bad behavior, which is accelerating because of the protections that have been put in place mm -hmm. over time, then at some stage, the good cops actually have to, to start, start ratting to say, out the bad cops. Guys, we have a problem. You're, a, you know, you're sort of infringing on my reputation right. as, a, as a good person. Right. So, you know, what I would love to see is, is, is people self-police yes. themselves literally by saying you know what guys this is not cool like right. we shouldn't have a secret list of bad cops right well, and we shouldn't have people saying that's cool anyone who is a law enforcement officer in this in the state should be saying i want that list released right, right. so that we can see who these people are right. and so that we can fix the problem right and so that me the good cop the decent cop isn't getting lumped in with those that those unknown sort you know it, it's just a bad it's not, it doesn't leave a good taste in your mouth no so so in this instance um this former manchester police officer um he was a sergeant um he had a tenant that he was having a dispute with and the article doesn't really you know you don't really know i think there's still a court case pending but um supposedly this this tenant who this cop hired to do maintenance in lieu of paying uh, rent, which opens up another question about whether or not you can actually even do that because there are employment laws, whether I agree with all of them or not, they still are in place and they, you're supposed to follow them. Um, but the guy, you know, opened a safe or something that was in the base, I don't know, something. So this police officer, Sergeant Eric Knight, took it upon himself to get other police officers to go and investigate this damage complaint. And I th right away I thought, now, 
Imagine if Tammy owned a property and somebody was damaging it. Their tenant was... Imagine that. Imagine this bizarre (laughs) scenario where somebody was potentially damaging my property. Do you really believe that the Manchester police would even respond if I called? Oh, no. (laughs) Because I know firsthand that I have called over... And this isn't just recent. I remember years ago... I was doing a sine wave over near where the smoke haven is. It used to be a Dunkin' Donuts. And I was parked right there on the street. I was like literally hundreds of feet away. Got back to my car and my car went, side window was smashed and somebody had taken stuff out of my car. Oh. And this is probably like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, somewhere in there. And I remember I was like, oh my God, somebody broke into my car. And I called the police and it was this like, well, what would you like from us? And I'm like, well, I'd like you to send a police officer. And they were like, well, oh, you should we just go to that. your house. And then I, nobody ever showed up. And I called back and they were like, I'm not sure why you want us to send somebody. And I'm like, because I was robbed. And basically they said they Here's they your don't, claim number they, for your well, insurance. I have actually, and I yeah. still remember, he took his little notepad and he wrote this number on a little like, scrap of paper and gave it to me. And he goes, there's nothing we can do. Okay, so there's nothing you can do because it's just property damage. And okay, and, But this police officer could get three detectives to work on this, which means at least three other people in the police department did something they probably should have known wasn't really ethical. So he ended up, this police officer, um, ended up, um, he was placed on leave, um, and, and then he retired. He had been there for 21 years. So this is what gets more interesting. Um, and in Mark Hayward's article, he said that um, he was making, where is it? He was making like 80, oh, he, when he retired, he had an annual salary of $94,000 a year. Wow. Which is a lot. And I'm not to begrudging police officers from making a decent living for the job they do, but just so you know. Um, another $22,000 in overtime. Okay. So now he's at what, $116,000 a year. And on December 1st of, um, I assume last year, since he retired in 2018, he started collecting an $80,000 a year pension. Wow. I'm not really, the $80,000 number concerns me because that doesn't fit in what I thought was the case. I was under the understanding that when somebody retired in the state Um, retirement system because the police are part of the state retirement system that they get half if they retire at the after the appropriate amount of time which 21 years i think it's a 20 year thing that they get half of their the three highest years so if you made a hundred thousand and a hundred thousand a hundred and ten you'd get half of you know a hundred and three or whatever um eighty thousand is nowhere's close to half of 116,000. So that's concerning. Um, Equally concerning, because this is what I do is, well, how old is Sergeant Eric Knight? Knight. I'm pretty sure he's not even 50. Wow. Right. So you and me (laughs) and all you people watching in Manchester, for the next 30 or 40 years, years, are going to be paying him an 80 grand salary. Nice work if you can get it. (laughs) Right. Because he retired because he was doing something wrong. Yeah. And and I. He doesn't get penalized for doing something wrong. And I'm kind of curious about that. Like, how come that is that way? And the only reason I can think is, as we said at the start of the show, is there's this sort of closing of the ranks where people are protecting their own. And, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, these people are socialists and people are like, (laughs) and you're this and you're that, and we're all name calling. But I think genuinely most of us can agree that That doesn't create a sense of fairness. It doesn't sort of create a sense of equitableness. There's no sense of, yeah, that's right. So someone does something wrong, they get to retire and they get- With a full benefit. To get like a lot of money, like right. I'm never going to be I'm able never to getting retire. I'm never going to be able to retire. No, we're no. I I always I will I, have to work right, for my entire last, life, uh, right? And as partly long, right. because I have to pay 
other people's, people's well, retirement. And the number- so a much fairer system, in my opinion, for people who care about justice and equitability <laughs> and fairness and all of that would be let's treat everyone the same, which means no one gets it. Right. Because... And I'm not saying that because obviously people have been promised pensions. But certainly if you're getting fired or you're being allowed to retire because you did something wrong and they're like, oh, it's much easier. Let's just solve the problem this way because then we don't, you know, someone else is paying. So we'll Well, and don't forget he probably got a severance bonus in there too because... Oh, because that's happening now too, right? That's 10 or 20,000 a year. Pensions, I mean, you do not have to be a mathematician. You do not need to be really, really smart to think that just looking at this one individual, if he is truly getting an $80,000 a year pension for 30 or 40 years, keep in mind, we also have to hire another police officer to replace him, who in 20 years, while this guy is still alive and collecting pension, Mm -hmm. will retire and collect his, you know, then it'll be a $100,000 pension or whatever, and hire another cop. So when you we look at the costs, if you look at the budget and you look at where the numbers just grow exponentially, it's in healthcare and in pensions. pensions. And pension funds all over no, the country are, are, are bankrupt. Because I mean, I it think just doesn't make, it can't work. It's not sustained. Like the math just doesn't just, work. You can't be like, we're just going to continue to pay more and more people more and more money. Who are living longer and longer. Longer. You know, and and that's the other thing. Like, none of this stuff changed when life expectancy. I mean, people were like, oh. And it's not. You know, I. And I thought pensions are only supposed to kick in when you're like 62. Well, that's what I thought. I thought, well, it'd be one thing if we said you can retire after 20 years and you'll get a full pension when you're 65 or whatever the age of Social Security is. How about that? Because. Social Security isn't the same as it used to be. Because even. also, then that would that would encourage someone to be like, "Hey, I'm 50. I'm I'm a viable, productive right. person. Maybe I could go find a job to, in the private sector and open sector up this position for and, a younger guy who can you know, earn his." Sin. And it really goes down to, I mean, part of it is you've got divine, defined benefit, which is a pension, or no, defined, yes, defined benefit, which is a pension, because you're defining how much you're going to pay out. Versus defined contribution, which is how much you're putting in. So if we switched, and and I get that it, there's going to be a hiccup, and I get that there's going to be a hole in the pension fund. That's because the math doesn't work. If we switch everybody over to a 401k, that money would now be there for them regardless of when they retire. If you retire at 50 and you've got, you know, a million dollars in your 401k, then you can choose to spend it as you want. Um, but this so, def- so basically making it a private solution that is applicable to all of us. And and the city most certainly would be able to contribute. You know, there'd be matching funds. It'd probably actually be better for some people. You know, I mean, not everybody's going to stay with their city job for 20 years. What if you only stay for 10? You don't get your pension? So what... Uh, And then, I mean, and then another thing that I've noticed, and I think this is quite prevalent in New Hampshire, I'm not sure about other states, but this sort of like double dipping, right? So now what happens is you retire, you pull a pension, then there's this exception to the rule that says if you work less than 40 hours a week, yeah, there's a number. Then you can, I think it's 38 hours actually, but you know, don't quote me, it's under 40. So if it was 20. You can now get another job and keep still, your right. pension. So now, I mean, right. I know that that the head of um, uh, uh, um, Homeland Security yeah. in, in Dave, Chief Mara, former uh, Chief Mara, no, actually oh. Perry Plummer. Okay. So I think he might be some. I don't know. There are so many alphabet soups; it's hard to keep straight. But you know, he was a a fire chief, retired at one twenty yeah. with full pension. You know, and then took this other position. And so it's like, wow, you're making like two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. That's on my do- a lot on of my money. Back. That's a lot of money. Right. Well, and people that, in the private sector aren't making this kind of money. I wish well, people would understand. Well, and that. Then, then that there's this constant or very debate. few people, right? They, there's the this top one percent, right. maybe. One, but you know what? There are ninety nine percent of us that are somehow as taxpayers just being lumped in, right? Well, I mean, like, I look at, you know, I mean, 
Louis works in tech. Dan works in tech. We both, you know, I there's money to be made out there, but then... But Dan doesn't have a retirement fund no. and he pays his health insurance, our health insurance, sure. which is very expensive and unusable. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, it is. Yeah, no, I you know. Dan you. keeps I saying you need to pick a primary care doctor. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I'm never going to get an appointment. And yeah, I don't think it covers it. There, there was so, an article in today's union leader about uh, health care up in Canada, I think it was uh, uh, uh an op-ed, you know, where people were saying, oh, you know, we want the system to be more like the Canadian system. And the Canadians are like, and don't the Canadians do it. are like, I did not know this. So 90% of Canadians live within 90 miles of, of the, the American, American border. Yeah. And basically Buffalo and like all the Seattle, all the, all the have cities huge on hospitals the, doing Canadian health care. Anyone who doesn't want to wait six months for an MRI yeah. or a CAT yeah. scan or a, you know, a a non- mammogram, right. something that's important. God you know, forbid maybe, you have yeah, a hernia, you're right? not getting surgery for nine months you are, know. Co- are coming to america so why would we want to switch to his- because we're trying to condition people to think that our health care system in the united states is terrible where our health care system if the government would just stay out of it was fine <laughs> yes i mean we started all hipaa had good intentions I and it's it really caused a lot of problems. The whole the whole coding system for insurance companies that the government has you know mandated and whatnot just makes p- more paperwork and less care. And it's I mean I've worked in a me- in a medical office. The amount of employees it takes to manage the admin, it's yeah, crazy. It's, and all of that paper moving around is really inefficient because no and it's minimal amount of people actually seeing somebody for care and so and and here's something and you know and i hope people who watch us you know frequently kind of understand this by this stage but it never hurts to say it again is what we currently have is not capitalism so when i say i'm pro free market yeah i'm not saying this kind of whatever we have you know the capitalism right this this crony capitalism yeah is a good system, no. right? So people shouldn't look at the healthcare system and go, well, well that's not free good. markets don't work. Because well, it's, it's like, not free. There's... Well, well, it's not free and you're building in all this red tape. Yep. And then uh, you have lobbyists for like big pharma yeah. who are coming to government and they're like, you know what we should do? Let's collude and we'll set these prices at this rate instead of the market, if it's Deciding. truly working r- r- the right way, drives down the yep. cost because these people all have to compete. Yep. So a really classic example is LASIK eye yeah. surgery, right? So yeah. LASIK eye surgery, what, it's 25 years old, yep. probably the tech by now. And it used to be wicked I mean, expensive. it cost, you know, it cost like, I think it was $10,000 yeah. per eye when it came out. And over the years, it was unregulated. It was one of those weird yeah, little yeah. things that just kind of fell through the, the grabby hand <laughs> red tape of, you know, all the bad guys. And the price has just come down and down and down and now over it's, the years. Now it's and like, I mean, it's I think it's a thousand bucks. I, think I was going to say, if it's fifteen hundred, I'd be surprised. You know, and and so that when when I'm championing markets, that's the kind yeah. of stuff I'm championing. Yep. And so you know, so in this scenario, I mean, we just know that this is not sustainable. The math is just never well, going to work. On the math note, just to enrage some other people i don't be so angry all the time here's i'm going to interject that what is with the people being angry you know i think i'm a pretty um high passionate passionate (laughs) person i don't think i'm angry though i don't walk around swearing at people just for the hell of it or posting nasty stuff just because I, I can't get past it. And I something's got to give. And, you know, they can all, people can blame Trump. Trump doesn't, it, I think I blame the media and social media more than any other person. But, but it's, it's, it's on purpose. Yes, we're trying to build people this frenzy. People are, I mean, there is, yes. It's this frenzy that we're building. I mean, I saw an article, I'm like, oh, look, Carol Rabideau shared Victoria Sullivan's office opening. That was nice. Oh, and then you want to comment? memes and like, I'm like, and that she's evil. And I'm thinking, okay, you don't have to agree with Victoria politically, but let's not call her evil. She's a mom. She has two wonderful boys. She does good things for her community. She's not evil. Don't stop saying she's evil. I don't go around saying Joyce Craig is evil. No. I, I, I actually commented because Candace Moulton had said, Somebody said, well, why should I vote for Joyce Craig? And she said, well, because of all the terrific things she's done. And I wrote back and I said, 
Could you tell me one of those terrific things? Because that's all I want to know. Maybe I missed them. I know she over she didn't try to protect the tax gap. I don't think that's a great thing. No. Um, but while we're on the subject so that we don't talk about this another week, I did want to say, um, I, stumbling, I was looking like, okay, so Eric Knight, what did he make? You know, how much money? So I looked up the 2016 because the union leader posted all the salaries. Yep. In 2016, he made $109,978, which seems to be in line with what Mark Hayward was saying. So the 80,000 numbers concerning. But one other thing, I, I went to a, um, a little meet meeting on um, budget and uh, trying to understand the city budget because yep. it is confusing. And I, I follow these things and it's confusing. So and well, I think well, partly so that it just becomes really hard for taxpayers person, to understand it. Right. And then you just kind of glaze so over. So we had a whole big like, conversation what? about how the tax cap actually impacts taxes yep. and all this stuff. And in there, um, one of the conversations was about the police, the pending police contracts, I think that are tentatively approved. What you always hear is, well, they got a 2% cost of living. You know, they only, they, they negotiated a 2% cost of living, which on the surface, I was like, well, you know, if you're, if that's all you're getting, that's not onerous, you know, there's a cost of living. That's a reasonable cost of living. Agreed. Except for that's not all that anybody gets if you work for the government. In addition to that 2% that you hear about, they're forgetting to tell you about the 3% that they're guaranteed every year because of Yarger Decker in this step system we have. Every year. So it's really a 5%. So that becomes 5% without any other concessions that they made for hazard pay and all these other things. But that step, I went out and I... You can download the step schedules because I know I like to actually check my math. (laughs) So I put it into a spreadsheet and sure enough, every year it's, you know, it it wavers right around 3%. But what was disturbing for me, because again, now keep in mind, we're three cops deep to pay the pension of the pension of the pen, you know, if somebody starts at um, whatever grade 16 is, they might start out their job and they're making, you know, around $20 an hour. By the second year, you know, they're, they're getting their 3%. Now, this is not including the cost of living. Okay. This is just if they only got step increases, which they are guaranteed just for, just for being there. Okay. You came to work again for another year, you get 3% more. After 13 years, those jobs are paying nearly $20,000 more than they were when they took the job. So if you took a $50,000 a year job, you're now making 70. You're now making 70. And that's plus just your cost. The co- that's just that's, the step. Okay. Now what that turns into, thank you, Dan, was Dan said. So if you took a $50,000 a year job and you worked for 20 years, which is when you're fully vested, I think for your pension, kind of like Sergeant Knight was, $50,000 in year one, if you just got the 2% cost of living, which I think is uh, acceptable, that job after 20 years is paying seventy-four, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000. That's, that's a whole half of that job increase over 20 years. Then, if you took that $50,000 and only got the step increase, that 3%, that $50,000 a year job at the end of 20 years is now paying ninety. dollars thousand dollars wow okay now we know that you get the cost of living right. and you get your three percent never mind none of this includes benefits this doesn't include your pension this doesn't include your health care that's amazing um any of that stuff and that, the benefits i mean are just so expensive now that yep. that's also not yep. i mean i think they say that it's like 20 or thirty thousand dollars an employee for oh, health care yeah. that fifty thousand dollar a year if you take the five percent comp- combined because it compounds every year that fifty thousand dollar a year job 20 years later that employee is now making a hundred and thirty two thousand dollars now think of your job in the private sector do you ever think that you're going to take a fifty thousand dollar a year job and 20 years into it be making like two and a half times as much money without changing your job. Not without changing your job. I'm I not, we're not talking about promotions. promotions. We're talking you stayed in exactly, exactly the, the same, same job. job. You didn't even have to do it well. No. Nope. You just had to go. 
No, and and my no, just to clarify, my no was no. You you're not going. You to. couldn't do that in the private no. sector. No, I mean now you certainly could go from a fifty thousand to a hundred and thirty-two thousand dollar job by changing but, jobs. But that would be like, let's say, like in my field, you started as a paralegal, yes. then and you then you took became the bar exam. Yep. Then you became yeah. a lawyer. Then you were an entry level yep. lawyer. Uh, you then know, you became then, a part. Yes, you know. Same and, with and, Dan. I mean, he was, you know, he did this type of IT stuff, and then he did this stuff, and then he learned new technology. So now new he, skills, providing new services, doing. You know, I mean, I, like, honestly, Dan's been. I mean, that's only he's in the tech world. You change jobs a lot, right? That's just the nature of the beast. Um, but I think he's been with the company he's at now for a couple of years. I think. Even the job he had before that, that he had been at for, you know, three, four, five years, whatever. Your salary never changes. Right. You and don't get it. You don't even get a cost of living increase. You're lucky. You just get what you were hired well, pretty at pretty much, much. Pretty much you get what you're hired at. It depends on the company yeah, and the size and stuff. But for a lot of people, the, the way they actually level up with those kinds of in, uh, increases in the private sector is they change jobs, right? right? So you're like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I started here them, right. and now I'm going to try for this job yeah. and that's how you get, yeah. you know, those increases. So in the private sector scenario, what we're actually building into the system is um, exceptionalism, right? You're building in, I have to, to improve my skills to get, more. to get more. But in this scenario, this is, you have it's, to attend. it's almost the opposite. It's like, well, I can get a payout in 20 years time if I just don't rock the so, boat. So, you know, like you hear it in teacher salaries a lot. When you hear, oh, it's awful. The starting salary for a teacher in Manchester is only 39000 or whatever it is. But imagine if you got a starting salary of fifty, because we know this number. 20 years into it, so you start that job at 25, right? Yep. So now at 45 years old, you're making $132,000 doing exactly the same job that you were doing when you were 25. And you can then get and then 80, eighty thousand a year <laughs> to just it is get nuts. back. It is, it's just so, nuts. so. I guess in, in a nutshell, I just think that there are some myths that need to be dispelled. Well, because people, so the myth is this: the story that you know, uh, public sector people are ill-paid and they suffer and all of that. A lot of times, if you look at the first year salary, and is, there is no make no mistake, folks. It's on purpose. Yep. So your first year salary oftentimes does not look great, right? right? Because they're like, oh, now we can say this number. Yeah, they only And pay. everyone's like, oh, no, poor teacher. She's only making 39000 That's awful. And then five years later, she's making fifty, And you're, you're like, oh, that's a lot in five years. Oh, and, and you're making and, and seventy. With, and with teachers, I mean, also people need to remember it's you only two, work nine two, months of the year. Yep, two you know? of a year. And, and, and so there are all these things. So there's this sort of myth that's out there that, oh, these people, you know, they're serving and, and they don't make money. And I'm like, it's not entirely true. And then this whole idea of the pensions and this this idea that we can continue to pay these people. It's not. It's, it's crazy. It's not sustainable. It's a permit scheme, guys. And at some stage, the Ponzi scheme, someone's like, Somebody, we can't pay break. anymore. And on that note, we're out of time. <laughs> wow. So think about it and reach out to us, uh, manstalk at gmail.com. Otherwise, we'll just see you next week. Bye. Peace out, guys.